Let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them. That those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a shield. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and always ready to give more than we either deserve or desire. Pour down on us the abundance of your mercy. Forgive us of those things of which our conscience is afraid and give us those things for which we are not worthy to ask except by the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Old Testament reading for today is from Genesis 4, beginning with verse 1. Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offerings, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground, and now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can hear and bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any man who found him should attack him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from 2 Timothy beginning with verse 4, or chapter 4 beginning with verse 6. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil deed and bring me safely into his kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> A 
I do invite you to stand out of reverence for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel today from Luke chapter, chapter 18, beginning at verse 9. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now they were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them. And when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called to them, to him, saying, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to God. <clears throat> we speak together a common confession of our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated. If you did not have an opportunity today as you came into the sanctuary to drop your offering, I invite you to do that following the service today. We continue at this time with our next hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory.
us wisdom, grant us courage, serving you we adore, serving you we adore. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we have gathered here this day to worship your holy name. You have come here to meet us in your word. Lord, we pray now as we meditate upon that word that your Holy Spirit may be alive inside of us, leading and guiding us to follow that word as your people in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I was asked before the service, how come Lutherans always sit at the back? <laughs> I have no idea. You know, the last congregation I served, I had people in the front row, second row, third row. I was in college ministry campus ministry at Texas A&M University, the students sat on the front row. Of course, there they just wanted to heckle me. But anyway, regardless, <laughs> they sat on the front row. Well, if you've seen the, the theme today, we're going to talk about lessons from Cain and Abel. Very familiar story in the Bible. But before we jump into that story, hold on, I have a question for you, okay? And this is an easy question. It's either yes or no. How many of you grew up with siblings, brothers or sisters in your house? Anybody? A lot of people grew up with siblings in their house. How many of you never got into an argument with your sibling. Okay, I got a bunch of honest people here. That's good, okay, right? Yeah, I would, I would get into it. My, my next oldest brother was five years older than me, bigger than me, still bigger than me. And, uh, you know, he, he had this knack of uh, aggravating me. You know, we would play football. He would say, I will play on my knees. You can play on your feet. I didn't know it was harder to tackle somebody from their knees, okay? So he would aggravate me, and we'd get into a fight, and we'd get into an argument, and pretty soon there was mom, right? Any of you ever get in trouble with your mother? Yeah? In, in my day, with uh, my parents practiced what we called applied discipline. It was applied right here, okay, on the back side. Anybody else, you know, applied discipline, right? Now, my mother was not a very tall woman, and so compared to me, I'm six foot three, okay? But mom always swatted with a kind of an upstroke, right? You see how tall I am? You know how many times I was in trouble? Hey? <laughs> swatted me up a little bit. My dad, my dad, I don't ever remember my dad spanking me. My dad and my uncles following the order of his dad, if you got in trouble, they would twist your ear. Anybody ever had that happen? Tell you what, it brings you to your knees, but also, you know how much trouble I was in? See the size of these ears? Right? We're, we're, we're in trouble a lot. But that's just a part of it, you know, the sibling arguments, the sibling rivalry sometimes, those kinds of things would come about. And we see that that's really absolutely nothing new, right? There's enmity between Cain and Abel. Today, I'm going to talk about five lessons I believe we learned from Cain and Abel. You know, the first thing, obviously, we see right away, there was a murder in the scriptures, right? At the very beginning, and we, and the, the news is full of that today, I don't know, I can't. I can't hardly watch the 6 o'clock news and those kind of things because it's all about murder. I go, I read a lot of news on my phone, and I go in there, it's all about somebody's murder here, somebody's murdered there. But right, that's nothing new in the world. Start at the very beginning. And that's some of the things that we're going to look at is what the cause of that and, and just lessons we can learn from looking at the story of Cain and Abel. The first lesson, lesson number one, a right faith is necessary for a right relationship with God. A right faith is necessary for a right relationship with God. Let's look at the beginning of that reading. Now, Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I've got the man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore her brother Abel. Now, Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock in their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why is your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Many wonder sometimes why, why Cain's sacrifice was not accepted. And when we look at that, we see the Lord spells out the things that are going on, that sin is crouching in his heart. The sin is there. He says, Cain, if you do well, it'll be accepted. But sin is crouching. There's desire is contrary to you. It's contrary to the way God made you to be. Sin is there trying to lead you away from the ways of God. So 
why was Abel's offering accepted? When we go to the book of Hebrews, we get some insights into this whole story. Hebrew, uh, Hebrews 11.4, it reads, By faith, Abel offered to God a more sac acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. Faith was the difference. Cain, with the sin that was crouching, the sin that was leading him astray, was taking him away. The offering that he was bringing was not one of faith. It was just one that he just brought an offering. Doing it kind of out of the, out of the you know, just something you're supposed to do. Faith made the difference. It makes the difference in the way we live toward God, the way we live toward others. Faith makes the difference in our offerings that we bring to the Lord. Faith makes the difference in the way we live in our life with our God. We go also to Hebrews 11, verse 6. It reads, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Faith was the difference. Faith was the difference between the offerings that made Abel's accepted and Cain's not. Second lesson. Unchecked sin leads to ungodly action. Unchecked sin leads to ungodly action. The story. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Cain murdered his brother. He did not follow the way of God. In the epistle of James, first chapter, we read these words. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has given birth, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. Sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. You see that progression? That desire and sin, and it brings forth the action. If you go back to when, when uh, the first man and first woman, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, what was the thing? The serpent says, Surely God didn't say this. Right? That temptation. That thing entered. As soon as Eve looked and saw the fruit was good, it was all over. It wasn't the biting of the fruit. It was only the desire that was in the heart that led her down that path. We wonder, how, why didn't they know? Well, God had planted it in their hearts, right? God had planted his way in their hearts. But when they, fallen, when they fell into sin, it destroyed that perfect relationship. And then this unchecked sin of Cain led to this ungodly action. That's why God had to give us the commandments, did you know? Because without the commandments, we wouldn't know what sin was. Apostle Paul writes about that, right? We wouldn't know. Without the law, we would not have known what sin was, Paul writes. And the unchecked sin in our hearts would just lead us all amok. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what this world would be like if there were not godly people following commandments? I would dare say it'd be much like pre-flood when God saw and saw everything in their hearts into the Ten Commandments, God teaches his people what to do, the things that are ungodly, the things that are godly. And so he says, what's one of the commandments? Thou shalt not kill. Murder, murderous actions are far-reaching. Jesus says that even he who looks at his brother and calls him a fool has committed that in their hearts. That desire leads to such ungodly ways. And we can see that just in the world all around us, can't you? You can see the evil that's just in the world around us. Lesson three. God punishes sin. God punishes sin. God speaking to Cain. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground, and from your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Cain was punished. Abel's blood testified from the ground. Cain was cursed from the ground. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like something that happened to his daddy? Right? We had that in Genesis 3, in the fall. So now the ground's going to be cursed. Now Cain is cursed from the ground. The cursing comes from the brother's blood that is in there. He brought it upon himself. Again, pre-flood, man's heart is evil from the get-go. 
We know the stories of Scripture. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah. The evil is there. God punishes that. Romans 3, 23, the wages of sin is death. Quite a punishment. The bad news in this story, we're all sinful people. The wages of sin is death. Really, you know, we, it's easy to sit and point fingers, isn't it? That came. What's the old story? What's the old thing? Point one finger that way and we're pointing at you. The bad news is we're all sinful people. God must punish sin. The good news is that he sent his son Jesus to take our sin upon himself. That's the good news. That's what we call the gospel. The gospel is there that God gave his son. He made him to be sin who knew no sin so that we might have the forgiveness of sins. That leads me to that fourth lesson from this, this story. God loves the people of his creation. God truly loves the people of his creation. Even Cain, right? Then the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, lest any who found him should attack him. Even in Cain's sin, even in the punishment that he gave, God still loved Cain. But that's the heart of God, isn't it? God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God, who is rich in mercy, despite our sinfulness, God is rich in mercy, forgives us our sins, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. God desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. What was Jesus' message? Jesus' first words, first sermon, first public speaking, repent and believe the gospel. God loves his people. In baptism, he puts his mark upon us, says, I've redeemed you, you are mine. I'm going to go back to Hebrews. I love Hebrews. You've got to read Hebrews to understand the Old Testament sometimes because it clarifies so many things for us, just like the story of Cain and Abel. Hebrews 12, 24. We, right, we, the people of God, we have come to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Blood Jesus shed on the cross was for us. It was God's extreme love for us. Sin must be punished. He put it on his son, Jesus. That's why we have this great promise. Again, and from the book of Romans, as God is for us, who can be against us? I love this. Lesson five. We are our brother's keeper. That may be one of the more famous phrases of Cain. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, yeah! <laughs> You're to be your brother's keeper. Are you your brother's keeper? Yeah. You are your brother's keeper. We read in Galatians, we read in all of this, in the Gospels, uh, things like carry each other's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christian love. Jesus speaking at the judgment scene in Matthew 25, when you did it to the least of these, you did it Unto me? We care and love for our brothers. We, we read in, in also Matthew 5, in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. You know what that is? It's forgiveness. That repentant heart. That heart of faith that follows through in that. And how often do we forgive? I love it, right? The, the disciple that Peter goes, oh, Lord, uh, how many times should we forgive? Seven times? Right? He goes, you know, the, the, there's a little uh, translation variant, you know, the six in there. One of them says 70 times, seven. One of them says 70, you know, right, times. Regardless, it, it was so amazing that what? More than seven times we should forgive our brother? You know some of the background to that, that seven times? Why forgive seven times? Why would he say seven times? Cain! Seven. Sevenfold vengeance. You forgive 70 times seven, or you forgive 77 times. You forgive a lot, and you never stop forgiving. We love our brothers. We love one another. Beautiful scripture love covers a multitude of sins. Five lessons. The right faith 
is necessary for a right relationship with God. Unchecked sin leads to ungodly actions. God punishes sin. God loves the people of his creation, and we are our brother's keeper. Good lesson from this lesson. Who would have thought such a heinous action, a murderous action, we could learn so much about God and our relationship to him and our relationship to one another. It's my prayer that as we continue living out our lives as, as God's people, that we'll take heed to these lessons, follow them, not to our glory, but all glory to God through Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this day again hearing your word, heeding your word, learning about faith and about righteousness, but Lord, that righteousness that comes for you in our hearts and lives. And we pray, Lord, that you would lead and guide us by your spirit live our days in, in righteousness as your forgiven people, coming to you with repentance and believing the gospel, the gospel of Jesus. In his name we pray this. Amen. We have the list here of the prayers of the church today. I invite you as you're able to please stand as we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come to you today as children calling upon their Heavenly Father, knowing, Lord, that if we as, as human people had to give good gifts to our children, Lord, you as our Heavenly Father will give even greater things to us. We hear your word, Lord, that we that seek after you, Lord, that, that you desire to give us those things, those good things in this life, just as you have given us your Son, Jesus, as our Lord and as our Savior. Lord, we come before you today with repentant hearts, seeking your grace and mercy in our lives, and also seeking your spirit to lead and guide us in this life. We remember in our prayers this day the many, the many needs that exist in our world, people living around the world, truly in, in persecuted church, people living in fear in, in times and in, in war zones and danger. We remember the, the threats in our own border here in, in South Texas, those coming across with evil intent in their hearts. Lord, we pray that you would bring about peace, especially in those towns on the border that do not yet know peace. Lord, we pray for those that serve, that serve to protect us, that serve to defend us, that serve us in times of medical need, especially in these times, these continued days of COVID, it continues on and on and on. Lord, we pray that you would watch over those serving us in these days. Lord, we pray for this congregation, for the continued work of the call committee, and the, that whole process that continues. Remember those in, in Uvalde as they continue to recover from the murders that happened there. Remember, remember those who are recovering from hurricanes in Florida, and those who are seeking shelter in this, own, in this town of Port Isabel falling on fire this week in the condo. Lord, we know you love and care for your people, and we know that you will look down upon them. We pray, Lord, that you will be, you will use us also as your hands and feet and your, and your mouthpieces in this world bring about the good that you so desire. Lord, we're also mindful of those personally who are bringing those in, in need of healing, your healing presence. We pray for Ruthie and for Gloria. We pray for Ed. We pray for Ben. We pray for Irvin and Marilyn. We pray for Jean. We pray for Marie. Lord, you know the needs of each of these people better than anyone else could know them. Lord, we also know your healing presence and your healing power and ask that you would, would be with them during these times. We pray for Jack as he mourns the passing of his wife, Gina. We pray that you would put upon him that hope, that, the, that peace that the world cannot give, that peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we pray for Bill as he continues to serve as an English conversation partner, opening up the doors of opportunity to share the beautiful gospel that we have in Jesus. And we're thankful that John uh, Lubin's grandson is now a Marine pray that you bless him in his service, that you keep him from all harm and danger in his service. But as we gather here this day, again, we lift up these prayers to you, knowing that you hear us as you have promised, as we bring them to you in the name of Jesus, who also taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We say the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is on the Christian soldiers. I'm going to invite you to remain standing as we, as we sing that because you can't go marching as to war sitting in the pew. Right? <laughs> so please remain standing as we sing. Anybody has any announcements or anything that uh, the rest of the group needs to know? Bible class. Bible class. Kind of a continuation of the sermon theme today about living according to the walking in the spirit and things like that today. It's the Bible class today. And uh, it can be 10 minutes or it'll be two hours. <laughs> Depends on y'all. I mean, I, 
I don't, you write these things, you never know the discussion will go. Anything? Nothing? Okay. I'll greet you back here then.